this every month. In my view, in April 2014, to talk about sea defences. I visited Dawlish on the 4th of April, the day the Prime Minister reopened the station after the rebuilding of the seawall and railway tracks following terrible storms on the 4th of February. Construction workers, aka the Orange Army, worked 20 out of the 24 hours, not when the tide was in, for eight weeks to rebuild the seawall. I spoke to Ian Mundy, the station manager, about the cost. Hello. How much does it? How much did it cost for the line to be rebuilt? It was a lot of money. It was approximately 30 million pounds to reopen the line. This is how the line and the seawall looked after the storms. I spoke to a local news correspondent about seawalls. But also the seawall, because it's lovely, it's beautiful, and a lot of the work has been to fix the wall along the other side. So you can't see it, but just to the left of the railway line there, where that little ice cream kiosk is, and all the way along the back of the station there, has been opened up again, and that's been closed for two months. And people are very excited that they can now walk along the sea again, which they couldn't do while all of this work was going on. So as well as the trains, it's opening up the seafront to people to come and walk along and to see as well. So that's a line that not many people have picked up. Now I'm going to talk about seawalls and their advantages and disadvantages. The first hard engineering coastal defence option that I have looked at are seawalls, costing £10,000 per metre. Seawalls are very strong and probably the, one of the most effective, probably one of the most effective coastal defences. The, wa uh, the waves will rush up around the curved section and fall back into the ocean. Behind me is a recently rebuilt seawall, which was made, which was rebuilt after the devastations of the storms eight weeks ago. It has, it has been made to look attractive and made, and also made for people to walk across. Some advantages of seawalls are they, have, they are strong, they have a promenade to walk along, and they can sometimes look nice. On the other hand, some people think they look ugly, their maintenance costs a lot, they may erode over time, as they did in Dawlish, and cost the most expensive sea defence, over £10,000 per metre. The second hard engineering option is groins, costing £1,000 per metre. A groin is a barrier built at right, right angles to a beach made of wood, concrete or rock. I'm here in Dawlish again, looking at groins. As you can see behind me, there, there are some wooden groins. Groins pr protect the sand from long for longshore drift. A few, there are lots of pros and cons for groins. Advantages. Groins stop the sand from being pushed up the beach and will stop people from having to do beach nourishment for a while. Disadvantages. Firstly, as you can see, they need a lot of maintenance. Secondly, they prevent people from walking along the beach. And thirdly, if they are too tall or too short, they do not do the job properly. The third hard engineering option that I have looked at is rock armour, costing £3,000 per metre. Below me is rock armour. Rock armour is probably the second strongest um, sea defence after sea walls. Some advantages of rock armour are they are very strong, cheap and natural. Some disadvantages of rock armour are they are expensive to transport, they prevent access from the beach and they may fall down. Although Dawlish has seawalls, rock armour and groins, none of these manage to prevent the horrendous damage. I'm here in Babicombe and behind me you can see what has, the coastal erosion has caused this dreadful landslide. If you look closely you can see a house which has been just taken away by the landslide. Final coastal defence option which I have looked at is so which is soft engineering is beach nourishment, costing ten pounds per cubic meter. Another type of coastal defence is beach nourishment. Beach nourishment is where work 
construction workers add sand if if the sand has been taken away by longshore drift. There are some pros and cons for beach nourishment. I'll give you two advantages and then three disadvantages. The two advantages are widens the re right why it widens the beach and the structures behind the beach are protected as as long as the sand remains where it is three disadvantages are beach the beach turns into a construction zone while it while the beach nourishment is happening the the beach nourishment may damage wildlife on the beach the the sand added to the beach is often different to the sand that is already on the beach and may and it is hard to find an exact match. After considering four coastal defences, rock armour seems to